few weeks ago, my wife Megan and I were able to go on a vacation with no kids. My mom gave us a gift three nights away with no kids. Thank you, mom. It was incredible. We went to this little cabin on a little lake. And I got to tell you, the reason we picked this cabin was because on the VRBO listing, it said no Wi-Fi and moderate cell service at best. And I said, that's the one for us. And so we drove all the way down there the whole day is a long driving day. And the first night we got there, I was pretty beat and it was already pitch black outside because it's, you know, out in the woods and stuff. And I didn't have a device to do anything on. Couldn't do, be on my computer. The phone wasn't working for anything anyways. And so I said, well, you know what? I'm going to read a book to start winding down before bed. And after a few minutes of reading the book, I was exhausted. It was so late. I looked at Megan and said, we should go to bed. And we looked at the clock and it was 7.18 p.m. (laughs) But because we didn't have any kids to have to do a nighttime routine, we went to bed. And when I woke up 10 hours later, I felt like a new man for one and two. The sun wasn't even up yet. And so I got dressed and I got ready and I went outside down by the dock at the lake to watch the sunrise. And it is in those first few moments when the faintest parts of dawn are starting to show up. And so the, the stars aren't quite as bright anymore, but they're still pitch black everything, except for the littlest, faintest outline of the tree on the edge of the lake there. And it was in that moment that everything else is dark. And even though I know there's a lake in front of me, I can't see it. I could have been standing on the edge of a cliff for all I knew. Because it was cold, it was dark, there's no color, No shapes except for the faintest outline of those trees lining the lake against the sky and only the wind gently whistling by to remind me that I'm not actually asleep. I'm not actually floating aimlessly through space. And it reminded me of how the first few pages of our Bible describe the moments of the beginning of creation. If you want to open up your Bibles to Genesis 1, I'd invite you to. You can grab the Black Sea Back Bible in front of you as well. And it's right there, those first few pages, you you go past the table contents, but then we get to Genesis chapter 1, and it connects us with what is at the beginning. We read, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, which means everything there is. The earth was a formless void. And, and if you're looking in the Black Seaback Bibles, you might notice that there's a, a note, a little asterisk right by the word created, right? And that if you look down at the bottom of the page, it's going to tell you another way to render that phrase in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, which is the way I always learned it. There's another way we could render it, which says when God began to create the heavens and the earth. And I love that because it just shows that creation wasn't just a one-time thing that happened way back then and then God kind of set earth going and then walked away like a watchmaker and it's just going. No, creation was begun by God and is still being done by God as he creates each and every new moment, invites us to participate in his work. So we read, when God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and void. Now the Hebrew words behind formless and void, uh, they're meant to describe the sense of numbness, nothingness, wasteland. In the darkness, there's no shape, no color, just this chaotic unknown. And then in verse 3, it says, Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. It's such a simple act, speaking, right? I just did it right there. Oh, look, I did it again. But when God speaks, it doesn't just take thoughts and form them into words. When God speaks, it actually creates worlds. He said, let there be, and then there was. Before there was nothingness, formlessness, void, and then God spoke, and there was light. And with light comes color, comes shape, comes depth, definition. Just like that morning that I was sitting by the lake. Because without the light, the whole earth was formless and void. And in the dark, all there was, was uncertainty. The unknown, cold. Was the lake right in front of me or was it 10 yards out? Was it deep? Was there monsters? Would I be safe or would I drown if I got too close? And then the sun appeared 
slowly and then all at once. And the light burst over the tops of the trees, and there was color and shapes and depth. The trees and the dock and the shoreline stood out against the lake, and the ripples in the water reflected the million variations of color that the sun was painting the sky with. And I stood and I breathed in the crisp air. And I watched a flock of geese swoop low over the lake. And the wind brought the sounds of life from the other shoreline to my ears. And it was all a gift. When was the last time that you received the morning as a gift? It was a long time for me because in my stage of life right now, most mornings involve one or three little humans having need before the sun comes up or being hungry before the sun comes up. And I enter most mornings stumbling into my morning, wanting nothing more than coffee. That's all I want. And then, you know, I can't forget to let the dogs out. And then I got to check the weather for the day to know if I'm dressing for super cold or not so cold. And then I check my email or the news or social media. And I flip back and forth between fun little jokes and pictures of people I know and all the stress in the world because of what's happening in the world. And then the things that I don't have, but advertisers remind me that I don't have them. And now I think that I need to have them. And the kids have to get dressed for the day and I've got to brush my teeth for the day. And then don't forget to reply to that one person who reached out. And then all of a sudden... I'm standing at the kitchen window and I see the whole backyard because the sun is up. When did that happen? How did I miss the sun coming up? I went through my whole day. The world started as formless and void, full of uncertainty and possibility. And I kept my eyes shut. I got sucked into all the other tasks and have-tos in life. And I didn't experience the light overcoming the darkness bringing light and life. Maybe you're in a similar life stage to me and you've been nodding along, smiling this whole time, or maybe you're in a different life stage, but you also experience the rush of stress and have-tos and the things that you get to be pulled into, the uncertainty that pulls us everywhere in our world. And now we're in December and the rush isn't going to become less. The stress isn't going to go down. The barrage of advertisers telling you that you don't have something that you need in order for your life to be better, they're not going to stop. All those extra reminders in our society about what a perfect Christmas season should look like, it's going to keep pointing its accusing finger at you, make you wonder why you don't experience the picture-perfect holiday gathering like every family is supposed to have. Because it's a season of light and joy, but some of us aren't experiencing very much light or joy right now. Some of us are stuck in the shadows. Sometimes all of us are experiencing the opposite of joy. We're not experiencing peace or hope. So why don't we feel that? Why aren't we automatically happier at this time of year? Why isn't our family like that perfect Norman Rockwell painting of everyone gathered together, singing songs, happy to be with each other, sharing love? Why don't I feel God? Why is my stress climbing with every day that we get closer to Christmas? Well, you're not alone in feeling that way. And this season of Advent that we're in, when we're practicing again the waiting, the expectation, this is a time when we get to remind ourselves and those we love that God is always in the business of shining light into the darkness. We get to remind each other that when you're experiencing darkness in life, that is actually an invitation to step into the light. And in our gospel reading today, which is on page... uh, Thank you for the person who's quick there. It's on page 70 in the Black Seaback Bible. If you're using your own Bible, I don't know what page number that is. But in the Gospel of John, we're going to look at Jesus' arrival and see how it's a mirror of creation, that God's ability to bring light and life to where there used to be uncertainty and chaos, that hasn't changed since the beginning of time. And so let's read together the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and we'll be reading the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come to being in what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, since we just read the beginning of Genesis a few minutes ago, there should be a lot of this that seems familiar. In the beginning was God. Well, according to John, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Actually, from God. And the Word was God. And so if we keep reading the whole book of John, we'll see that he's referring to Jesus as the Word of God. And so right here in the beginning of his book, he's connecting Jesus to creation and to being God. He's the word of God, the very creative force that brought everything into being. And when the word of God spoke, said, let there be light. It was more than even the type of light that we've been talking about, right? Sunlight or lamplight that brings color and depth and shape. This light was life. The life of all humanity. And so we see in Genesis, Genesis sets up this picture, in the beginning... When God began to create, the world was formless and void. It was chaos. And the darkness was with the chaos. And the breath of God, the spirit of God, hovered over the waters, hovered above the waters. And then in John 1, we see that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. He is is with, he is from God. And he sat in authority above all creation because nothing came into being without him. And the light that shone in the darkness was light. And the light was so incredibly more powerful than darkness. Because darkness can't overcome light. We know that. Darkness runs from light. Shadows don't exist in light. Shadows exist around the corner or behind the door. And as soon as you shine a light where the shadow was, the darkness is gone. In darkness is where things like fear or the unknown or secrecy are. But in light, it brings confidence. It brings certainty. It reveals what you couldn't see before. What used to be hiding in the darkness. Because the darkness brings cold. It's where death is. It's where isolation is, the feeling of alone. But light brings life and warmth and connection. And darkness can't overcome the light. The darkness can't overcome Jesus. Jesus is the light that brings life to all people. And you might say, I've heard this before, Pastor Drew. How does this apply to me right now? Well, if you're experiencing darkness in your life, or stress, or disconnection, or feelings of alone, when we're experiencing fear, uncertainty, that is an invitation to step into the light. Because the darkness can't overcome the light. But I can choose to stay back in the darkness. I can choose to stay back in the shadows. I can allow myself to become so busied and distracted that I don't even notice the sun coming up in the morning. Even on that lakeshore that morning when the sun was bursting over the trees, I could have kept my eyes closed. 
oh, it's so dark and kind of scary and I'm not sure if I'm going to fall into the lake and I'm going to close my eyes out of fear. And I could have kept my eyes shut and not received the light. This is what John is saying in verse 10 when he talks about the world did not know Jesus. They did not comprehend or understand him. He came even to his own people, the people of God, who had been told that a Savior was coming, by the way, but they didn't accept him. They didn't receive him. They didn't open their eyes to receive his light. And so I'm wondering for you, in your life, where do you need more light? Where do you feel darkness? Where do you feel disconnection or isolation? Maybe you're experiencing relational conflict right now. This time of year, it brings people together. And that brings with it old wounds. Or the people don't come together because of old disagreements or ongoing arguments. And the fact that they don't come together now feels like one more cut to a heart. And see, the darkness is where those old wounds, those ongoing disagreements can fester and thrive. And they cut people apart. They cut them off from each other. They keep people separated, keep them both in the darkness, both feeling isolated, both staying back, unsure of where the next attack is going to come from because I can't see in the dark. And so if you feel like you're in a season of darkness, well, you need light. You need the light that is the life of all mankind. You need Jesus. Because Jesus can shine his light into every area of your life if you let him. And instead of staying in the darkness, tripping over each other, hurting each other, we need to turn on the lights to reveal what it is we're tripping over. We need to turn on the light to see where the other person is so that we don't accidentally hurt them again. We need Jesus to shine his light to reveal what are the secret disagreements? What are the old jealousies? What are the hidden wounds that have been festering maybe for years? Because when we see better, we can serve better. When the light of Jesus shines in our life, shines into that circumstance, we can see better how to join him in his work of healing and restoration. But I'm afraid, Pastor Drew, I'm not sure what's out there in the darkness. Honestly, I'm not sure what's in here in the darkness. Maybe that's the thing that makes you feel that you're in darkness is, is fear. It's fear of the unknown. It's the what if. What if my kids or what if my grandkids experience something that I can't help them with? What if they experience tragedy? What if they make dumb decisions? In other words, what if I'm not able to protect them or help them? What if no one protects them? What if God abandons them? And so I'm stuck in the darkness of this. What if I'm stuck in the shadow of fear and uncertainty? Well, I need light. I need Jesus. I need to ask him to shine his light into all the ways that he already has protected the people I love. I need him to reveal the history of his abundant providing. All the ways that he's helped them, all the ways he's already proven that he loves them even more than I could. Well, that sounds nice, Pastor Drew, but I I still have fear. There's still so much uncertainty around us. There's still so much that is in shadow and I can't be sure of what's coming next. I have fear around our current political situation, our current social environment. What if our society continues down a path that I don't agree with? In other words, I can't be sure of how things are going to continue. And so my anxiety is the only thing that gives me a sense of control. It helps me hold on to something. It's the only thing that's preventing I mean, my anxiety is the only thing that's stopping society from collapsing, if I'm being honest. Okay, maybe I don't actually believe that. But what if, what if God does let our society collapse? What if God doesn't care? What if God isn't there? Or maybe the fears are closer to home. 
Maybe we watch the ups and downs of the economy and we think about all the extra expenses this month. We feel fear and uncertainty and isolation when it comes to our financial situation. What if we never get out of debt and the bank forecloses on the home or takes back the car? What if we can't make ends meet and then we have to give up the way of life that we've become accustomed to? What if we have to give up the way of life that we feel we deserve because we worked hard for it? What if God lets me fall? Do we see how powerful fear and uncertainty can be? Fear leaves us clutching at anything, trying to control what we can. Fear leaves us unable to rest. It leaves us unable to enjoy or receive the gifts of each day. And that's why when we're feeling fear, uncertainty, isolation, when we're feeling darkness, it's an invitation to step into the light. That's why the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, uh, he lived 800 years before Jesus, and he pointed forward to an arrival of light. Because even back then, they knew what it felt like to live in darkness. They knew what it was like to live in fear and uncertainty and doubt and isolation. And so he writes, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. And then he continues, for to us a child has been born, a son has been given. Authority rests upon his shoulders, for he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. John writes it this way, the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glories of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Because God said, let there be light. And it was good. And the light was the life of all people. When we're feeling darkness, it's an invitation to step into his light. He hasn't left you alone in his darkness. He's inviting you to step into the light. And so where do you need more light in your life? That's where you need more Jesus in your life. Because Jesus shines his light and the darkness flees. It removes the unknown. It reveals what you couldn't see before. It renews our hope and peace as we follow the Prince of Peace. That's why this season... We all need a little bit more light in our life. And I want each of us to bring more light into our lives because fear lives in the shadows. But we don't have to stay there because we know that Jesus is on the throne. Because we know that God is a loving father who, who provides abundantly for his kids. Because we know that he has a plan and a mission that he has not given up on. And because we know that he has pursued us all the way to the grave and then brought us out again. And so I want us to bring more light into our lives this month. Because Jesus stepped into our world to bring light and we are created to reflect that light as image bearers of God. And so let's bring more light into our lives. Let's get more light into our lives. One of the ways, we've already talked about it earlier this service, is 14 days of light. It's a new little challenge we started up similar to when we've done a Bible reading challenge or similar to when we've done 21 days of prayer. This is an opportunity for us to engage in bringing light to us as well as light through us. It's a simple way to practice the spiritual habit that helps us spend time with Jesus. But we get to do it together as a whole church family because we were created to reflect Jesus' light into the world. And we were created to do that as a community, as a whole family, brought together by this incredible God who adopts us all into his new family, gives us all a new life, gives us, invites us into his new mission. And as we step into his light, we reflect his light to the people around us. We help them overcome the darkness. We help our community step into the light. We help to bring healing and wholeness to families and individuals around us because that's always been the plan of God, to bring light, to 
bring life. Isn't that good news? Amen. At this time, our music team is going to come up and lead us in a song. That's another opportunity for us to reflect on, God, what are you speaking to me? How are you inviting me to obey you? And how can I praise you today? Let's pray.